I'd like to call to order the Planning Commission meeting for November 1st, 2022 at 6.04 p.m. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Tenants roll call. Commissioner Groff. Here. Commissioner Oliver. Here. Alderman Madden. Here. C uh, Commissioner Buckmaster. Commissioner Bartlett. Here. Mary Pafalski. Here. Planner Trevitowski. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Statement of public notice. The By agenda the was posted and distributed to all I'm here media. too. He's here too. Oh, yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> okay. The agenda was majority. posted and distributed <laughs> to all news media requesting notification in accordance with the open meeting laws on Friday, October 28th, 2022. Thank you. Uh, approval of the minutes from the October 4th Planning Commission. So moved. I'll second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes. Uh, consent business. There is none. Hold business for consideration. Resolution PC 056-2021 and... Resolution PC 055-2022, nothing new. So, so the first 156-2021 should just be deferred, nothing new. Um, the second one we do have some updates on. They are different topics, same property, but different topics. Are they both? You, I'm sorry, the second one we So 55-2022, there is discussion tonight. Okay. Uh, resolution PC 056-2021, looking for a motion to defer that. So moved. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That no, motion is deferred. Resolution PC 055-2022, approval of a building site and operation plan amendment for Fry Auto located at Loomis, uh, Loomis Road, tax key number 2296.966. It's already on the floor. Was this deferred? Uh, yes, this was. Okay, so what do you got for us? All right, um, so as a reminder, um, the Planning Commission discussed this topic. This topic is specifically the idea of can Fry Automotive um, on what we're kind of calling a five-year term um, use the old location of his, you know, the gas station, which is south of his main site, as a site to have uh, an enclosed fenced area, um, some asphalt, some gravel for future or for outdoor storage to try to help alleviate the problems that are occurring on the main site with there being uh, too many vehicles on site. So this is one of the solutions Mr. Fry proposed. Um, we This was deferred because we wanted to get a little more clarity on the survey. So the survey that's in front of you now is updated. That survey now shows a drive aisle that was talked about with the Planning Commission requiring to make sure that when the cars are in this fenced area that a drive aisle remains open for um, number one, getting vehicles in and out, right? We don't want this to be a permanent just junkyard um, as no junk vehicles are allowed to begin with, but we'd want to just be a, you know, something where cars go to die. You know, this should be something temporarily just to help with the overflow on the other lot. So the drive aisle and also for emergency purposes is there. We did also ask that the tree line be shown, which the survey did do so we can kind of get an idea of what's screened and what isn't. Um, and then the last thing was just clarifying where the gravel was going to be, which the survey now clarifies that the gravel will be up to the edge edge of the parking lot areas. Um, you will see there's an encroachment into a wetland that has been deemed as an artificial wetland by the DNR, so there is filling and stuff allowed to occur there. There may need to be some drainage work done there because it's still a low area and you can't just fill a low area, um, but wetlands aren't a concern. Um, so. Um, the reason that this really is here then is to review with the Planning Commission, make sure they're still kind of okay with the previous discussions we had here. And then what you'll note on the drawing is um, there are areas that have uh, X's drawn in red. Those are the areas to reiterate where um, solid fencing is occurring, like a solid type fence, uh, board on board, I believe. And then the rest of it, the kind of backsides, if you want to call it, is where the applicant was asking for chain link with barbed wire. Um, the only areas that staff recommended changing that the applicant wasn't showing a solid fence is on the small southern section. Uh, we do know it's kind of tucked behind the trees, but depending on being kind of on the edge of the tree line, and given that some of those trees may lose their leaves in the off season, um, we want to make sure that we're trying to buffer from cars heading from the south and north as 
much as possible. So it's a small section of additional fence. Other than that, any of the other areas that the surveyor showed being solid fencing would remain as is, which that drawing shows with the X's. So, you know, the biggest question now is the plan commission kind of wrapping up their conversations from last time and, you know, deciding, you know, is this really the use they want to allow there? And if so, you know, are they good with this kind of revised site plan? Questions, comments? Well, it looks to me like he's put a lot of effort into spending time and effort with the survey company to get this done. And I, from what I'm seeing here with the red area, that would block off any visual uh, you said it's a solid board on board fence, you know, and the, the chain link on the backside is, I think it's pretty well covered from the times I've driven over there uh, with the foliage, even the dense without uh, foliage on the trees. I think the trees are dense enough back there not to have any other visibility, you know, so, and he's fostering a, keeping business in the, in the city. I think it'd be a, a smart move to you know, allow him to put additional, you know, within the code, uh, put other vehicles over there and empty some of his cars off his existing lot. So what's the audit plan? What's the what? Audit plan. Well, I, <clears throat> I think I think the worry of everyone's may be that hopefully this doesn't just grow the problem and not rectify the problem. As you know, um, the other item that's deferred is the problem with the other site not being compliance. And Mr. Fry actually has a trial date, not even a pretrial, but an actual trial where the judge is going to decide if he's guilty or not if the site isn't cleaned up by the end of December. So um, there's a lot of motivation for Mr. Fry, whether it's on this site alone or other places or just getting rid of junk. You know, Our ordinance doesn't allow a single junk vehicle on any one of these properties, fenced or not fenced. Right now, at least you know, a while ago, there was a lot of junk vehicles out there. So that should be an easy game me to get rid of those because there shouldn't even be there period and hopefully that between the junk vehicles that go away which have to go away by ordinance and whatever's left hopefully those sites those items that are across the street if they're brought here and enclosed and as long as more stuff isn't brought on the site that's the key is it can't keep adding to the problem we need to just get rid of in in you know things to help rectify the issue then i think this could be a solution a short term i don't think it's a permanent solution you know and, and i say short term still probably at least five years i think that's what we talked about last time was kind of just revisiting this at a five-year point um in addition to whatever the annual reviews or biannual reviews or whatever's happening across the street will tie to this also Correct. so that if we are looking at it you know let's say he gets his site into compliance you know as he's supposed to per the court stuff that's pending um, and we notice uh, in his next six month review or yearly review or whatever it is that if things aren't following the plan you know he'll be cited again and back here in front of us so um, I think fingers crossed I think everyone here wants the business to succeed and hopefully this is the tool that puts it there you know the site has been not in compliance for so long that the potential fines right now are well into the five digits so you know no one wants to see that get levied and if the property can get cleaned up the main one I'm talking about and if this helps achieve that, hopefully that can set us on a pace going in a good path for the future, hopefully. Is there, is there any wisdom in deferring 552022 until we resolve the first one? Well, this is, I think, part of the solution he's proposing to try to solve the first one. Okay. Um, I mean, yes, in ideal world, you wouldn't give more before you fix the first problems, but this is kind of a step towards trying to help work towards that bigger goal. So just to confirm in my own mind, we proceed here, the other issue gets resolved through the courts. If we do proceed here, it gets locked in for a six month review, whatever the review process is for the previous issue gets locked in. Yeah, there's something in the resolution, I forget the exact wording we use that ties them together as far as whatever reviews happen on one. Um, I'm trying to see if I can find it here. I think should be mirrored. Let's see here. Just want to verify that. Yeah, it says here, be it further resolved that the use on this property will be subject to the same annual review or other periods of time as required by the plan commission requirements as the main car dealership is. So whatever's going on there, this will be the way we function as one from an approval standpoint, um, yeah. 
Thank you. And then a couple other things that are just in there, um, just um, for everyone to know, Mr. Fry, you know, a zoning permit still needed for fencing as always is. That's a short, easy thing, but that would be a next step. Um, they will have to work with engineering to make sure that, like I said, whatever they're doing for fill doesn't impact any of the drainage ways. They'll work with engineering on that. Um, one of the things in the resolution is a signed lease must be provided to the city before any work starts. That is something we haven't received yet. We've seen a copy of a lease, but it was like a draft and not signed. So that's one thing. Um, you know, and then the only thing that's probably just pertinent to be made aware is, and this is public, um, this lot is for sale. The owner of it is trying to sell it right now. It's on the market for half a million dollars or something. And we have talked to people that seem very interested in purchasing it. Now, obviously, time will tell if they actually proceed with that. Um, if that happens, you know, that, that lease may be terminated depending on how it's written. Because I know some of the potential buyers want the whole site for their own use. So if something were to happen, you know, that could change this approval, for lack of a better term, that would almost invalidate it. But what's, you know, we'd, hopefully it works for Mr. Fry going into the future. But it, it is out there for sale, and we've t recently talked to realtors and possible buyers who are looking at purchasing it for their own use. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Fry, can you step forward? I have a couple questions for you. So part of this resolution, I'm going to point out a few things, and I want you to acknowledge that you know they're on here. So one of the items on here says the storage of junked wrecked or wrecked automobiles or parts is specifically prohibited from this site. Do you understand that? I do understand. Furthermore, do you understand that failure to comply with the approved list in this whole resolution can result in a $100 per day fine? Yeah. You're acknowledging that? I understand, yeah. Okay. I, think I'm, I, so I just want to make sure that right you said that on camera, <laughs> <laughs> knowing going forward, yep. we'll make it easier for the judge if you don't do any of this. <laughs> to, to comment on what Adam was saying, the, the owner of that property did, he said he, he's not selling it no more. He's just, oh, as of an hour ago, it's still listed. Yeah, because he's in a contract with the realtor, but he's been, as they're throwing people at him, he's says we're not selling it. I understand. So that just, and, sure. and, and I should point out that if the lease is properly written, the lease is transfer with the sale, so yeah. it's not. Yeah, and we made buyers aware of that too. Yeah. yeah. So if he has a lease, it should transfer with the sale unless it's specifically prohibited from that. So. Okay. And one other question I had too. Well, I mean, it's something we can probably talk about. Can you turn the microphone on? So is it? Uh, oh, it's, it's on. Okay, right. it's right. Anyway, um, with the reviews, will it eventually go back to like? everybody else you, an annual or is that something we're if talking you, about if next? you get good i think yeah. if you have a good quite a significant right. proven track yeah. record of no violations i think but it was down to monthly reviews <laughs> yeah i mean the, the site hasn't probably been in compliance ever since you've been there so if once we can show that it's continually in compliance i would love to have it be as far out as possible yeah, we, but just we, we don't enjoy running out there i, I believe but, it you know <laughs> Not get, that we don't want to see you, but yeah. uh, get, get, get better and anxiety is horrible. Nothing out. personal. We want to leave you alone, I promise. Yep. <laughs> Any other questions or That's comments? That's it. Any other questions or comments from the Planning Commission? No. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. New business for consideration, resolution PC062-2022, recommendation to the Common Council to rezone a property from BP3 Business Park District to B3 General Business District for Muskego Car Wash uh, <coughs> located on a vacant lot along Commerce Center Parkway west of Moreland Road, tax key number 2169.993.014. Move to approve. I'll second. Discussion? <clears throat> Um, as you guys may remember, there was this car wash that's in front of you tonight proposed on the west side of Moreland Road. Um, as part of this car wash proposal, um, one of the conditions, it was approved by the Planning Commission, and one of the conditions of approval was that uh, it needed a rezoning, and that just had a little bit more lead time to it with the public hearing statutory posting requirements. And as such, we then um, did the approval of the site plan first and the architecture, and then the rezoning was you know, one of the contingencies of that approval. So the rezoning is back in front of you tonight. Um, this is a recommendation we're looking for from you guys. Um, staff is recommending approval. We had a public hearing for this uh, recently at Common Council. There was no one that spoke at the hearing. So no news is usually good news. Um, and as such, we're recommending approval to rezone it to the uh, B3 business district. 
-hmm. Questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Resolution PC 063-2022, recommendation to the Common Council to rezone a property from BP1 Business Park and Office Park Support District to B3 General Business District for Jilly's Car Wash located on a vacant lot. Lot 2 being created via certified survey map along Commerce Center Parkway east of Moreland Road, part of tax key number 2169.999.011. I'll move to approve. Second. Discussion. Um, so uh, this is a rezoning from BP1 to the B3 for the car wash on the east side of Moreland Road for Jillies. Um, this was the approval that was also contingent upon the rezoning uh, occurring for the use to be official. Uh, this public hearing was also held recently. There were no comments that were presented at that meeting. Um, one thing we definitely wanted to note, uh, it was a minor typo that was in the public hearing notice stating that the existing zoning was BP3, which was entered in air, the existing zoning is actually BP1. Um, the, the important thing and the good part was that the proposed zoning, which is what matters, was listed correctly as B3 and upon reviewing legal staff, that was not a concern as long as the proposed zoning was correct. So we just wanted to make sure the record was clear on that, um, but staff is recommending approval for the B3 zoning for this property. Questions or comments? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. Resolution PC 064-2022, approval of a right-of-way vacation from Mark and Sherry Chapman located at South 81 West 16448 Kurtz Lane, tax key number 2218.9. 81.001. Move to approve. I'll second. Discussion? Um, this is one that you may remember. There was a land division. It started as like a six or seven lot land division on the west shore of Bass Bay, which then was eventually converted into just a single lot land division, um, severing this land from some land to the west of it. Um, a new owner has purchased the lot, <clears throat> and they're working with the former seller to vacate or get rid of, for lack of a better term, the Kurtz Court right-of-way. Um, it's a road that's there, um, very underutilized, as it only always served one home, which I don't believe anyone has lived in for quite a long period of time. Um, the right-of-way has, you know, no necessar necessary um, access, like I said, to anyone other than the one home that's currently on it. Um, but with the owners looking at building a new home here, having it vacated has no benefit to them, so they are requesting this vacation. Um, this does have to go through the Common Council also, which is coming in the future. Um, the only two things really worth noting here on this one is that... Um, <clears throat> this did already go through our Public Works and Safety Committee for the review. The policies and procedures talk about it going to Public Works and Safety to determine if there's any compensation um, desired potentially by the city due to you know gain in property value um, by this. And this technically is giving the landowner more land to build on and which would facilitate a land division if they would ever choose to do so in the future. So Public Works and Safety did determine that they feel there needs to be some compensation for this right away. And that's something that will have to be talked about further with the Common Council as far as how they want to look at doing that, whether it's an appraisal or whatever it is. So that's just noted. As well as um, there is a sanitary sewer main that currently goes under Kurtz Court we would also have to require that an easement be put on top of that sanitary sewer easement as long as it remains, which is not a big deal. That's very common for right-of-way vacations is to have to establish easements as normally they're protected under the right-of-way. So subject to those two items, uh, staff is recommending approval. Questions or comments? <clears throat> Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes. Thank you. Resolution PC 065-2022, approval of a metal accessory structure for Tyler Thompson located at W166 <coughs> South 6786 Oak Hill Drive, tax key number 2171.013. Move to approve. All second. Discussion. Uh, so this proposal is for a metal accessory structure, and as the Planning Commission probably remembers, um, if a building is different materials and or colors as the home, uh, metal buildings are a common example of this. They come for Planning Commission review on a case-by-case -case basis to see if they meet certain criteria established in our code. Um, the building proposed overall is about 29 feet by 35 feet, so about 1,015 square feet. Um, a 24 by 35 portion is a structure, and a 5 by 35 
portion is a covered lean-to off one side of the building. Uh, the building is proposed to be clad with a metal roof with metal walls. Um, the code talks about four criteria that can be discussed when talking about waiving materials. One of them says the structure is screened from view. Another is the structure is composed of materials, colors, or styles that are inappropriate in applications to an accessory building. The third is plan commission finds other circumstances to be present, which would result in no undue harm to the property or its surroundings. And the last would be when the area is found to not be predominantly residential. Um, and then, so depending on what comes out of this depends on the building permit and how that process goes from here. So as far as those architectural requirements go, um, you know, they are doing some different ones here. And, you know, relating to item number four specifically, which was the idea of it not being predominantly residential, this is an area that's, I think, a little bit different than some of the other ones we've passed, uh, at least in, more recently, um, being that it, it is a very neighborhood feel where they are. Now, I will say the property is pretty densely wooded and it is going in their backyard. Um, but with that being said, it's still a little bit smaller of a lot than we typically have appro approved metal buildings on. Now the building size is within the allowed size limit. So it's not a size issue. It's just the idea of, you know, bigger pole building, bigger statue, you know, is that something the plan commission's comfortable with metal siding? Um, you know, in the case like this, especially when it's a little bit more of a neighborhood feel. But with that being the case, it definitely is densely wooded, as you can kind of see on the aerial photography shot. Um, it definitely is still proposed 150 feet from the right of way as it is in the back of the property. Um, the building will include a service door, an overhead door, four windows, one on each side to provide a little bit more residential feel. Um, building is about under 12, 12 feet height or so to the midpoint of the gable, so the peak would be a little taller. Uh, and then all the typical requirements are listed in the resolution, like no business operations, no business storage, must have a solid concrete floor, overhangs must be equal to those on the main home, and then the colors still should be similar to the home. Um, so, you know, staff's recommending approval if the plan commission feels that given the character of the area, they feel it meets those code requirements. Like I said, this one teeters a little bit more than a lot of the other ones. You know, most of them we see are on much larger lots, uh, you know, which inherently puts them even much further from the road. Um, so we thought the plan commission should discuss this. Is there any uh, vehicular access to this? Driveway, gravel, dirt? There currently isn't. If the applicant um, is that, are you the property owner for this one? I'm sorry. No. So the, the applicant, um, Aaron, did he say he, had, he wasn't sure if he was going to make it with the work commitment. Um, he knew when the meeting was, but no, there was nothing shown. Um, given the, where they're putting it and given that there's an in-ground pool, it doesn't seem super practical to have something driven to it, but they would be allowed it if they were to follow the open space requirements and get a zoning permit. And I, and I think something that is, you know, we have more and more of these metal buildings being proposed. I think down the road, depending kind of what happens here, is one of those things where we may want to talk about just so staff has good guidance to give residents. You know, we want to give them good direction when they talk to us as far as encouraging or, you know, suggesting in certain directions or another is, you know, if you are going to allow it, you know, what are some of those thresholds that maybe we need to let people know of? Um, one thing we always do offer to residents, too, is the idea if someone's looking at the savings of pole construction, you know, a pole building is really a construction type. We have had a few homeowners owners that have built um, a pole building and clad it with siding. So, I mean, there is a middle ground there potentially. Yeah, I think, I mean, if I could speak, um, <clears throat> I, this one is a little different than the others. The others, everything we've approved like this, it seems like it's on a much bigger lot and much further from the property lines. This one's pretty tight, 25 feet. Um, I didn't get a chance to see what um, what is behind this? What's the big... So it, it is a permanent conservation outlot. So oh, uh, the is. Chamberlain Hill subdivision, that is yeah, permanent conservation. So okay. there will never okay. be anything back so there. So there will never be anything back there. Okay, well, that makes a difference. <laughs> that makes a difference. <clears throat> that kind of changes it for me, to be honest. Me too. No, I, I would say that, as you said, Adam, this is... Um, this kind of rides the edge from... Um, obtrusive, regardless of how heavy the wooded lots are, but it's so close to the lot line in both directions. And, and, and it makes it easy because there's a conservancy behind it. But what if there weren't? What happens to the next homeowner that comes in there five years from now and, and 
all the trees are cleared and or die off of oak wilt and we got this building there. And we said, it's okay. So uh, I'm, I don't have any real complaints about it, but I think it's very uh, marginal. Be curious what the neighbors think. Because they're not notified yeah. on this, are they? Uh, no, they're not. I agree. One of the things we had done when the quick trip went on, on college and it bordered New Berlin, uh, we requested uh, some extra foliage being put in. Is that something we could require a request for this? On each I'm, side of the I'm sure definitely yeah. would be well within what the Planning Commission could approve. Um, it's really a question of, uh, you know, the photo is always hard because they're taken early in the year, springtime, um, that I don't know if um, it's one of those things where how much would help because it's in a wooded area. You can come on up to the microphone right, if you up, want. We're talking about you right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the plan commission was kind of just talking about the idea of the idea of a metal building in an area that is a little more neighborhoodish, residentialish. Kind of walks that fine line of you know normally they're approved on much bigger lots and things like that. We did talk about it being wooded. We did talk about the conservation lot being behind. Um, uh, one of the commissioners just mentioned the idea of could there be additional screening added because there was a question uh, as to what do the neighbors think about it. Have you talked to your neighbors? I, I have on both sides. Um, they seem to be absolutely fine with it. Um, the one section of the property that uh, the, the building's going to be in is more or less blocked by the woods between us. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty heavily wooded. Um, and it's going to kind of like tuck back into um, that section between us. And it's in their, um, say, their furthest part of what would be their backyard because it, it kind of goes at that uh, pretty strong angle in the back. So um, on the north side of me, um, th that would be the one that would probably, you know, if they were going to see it, it would just be the, the backside through the woods. Um, you, you said screening, is there like something I could do? Like, Well, I would just question, I guess, you know, when you're putting, let's say you're doing arborvitaes, they're only gonna be so tall and they're gonna be under tree canopy already. How, how successful is that gonna be? Unless you do like a fence or something. Yeah. And they, can, and how, they can die just as easily as the Yeah, folks yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you've got what looks like hardwoods in there and you'd have to clear them to make them live. Right. They wouldn't get enough sun. Right. So. Yeah. And the neighbor, the neighbor to the south, um, there's already a row of, of uh, pine trees kind of established between the lot lines. Um, it's, they're, they're pretty faint. They're kind of spread out. They're, they're not the best. I mean, I'd be willing to put up something there um, if that would keep everyone. You know. I guess if the neighbors were concerned, they'd be here. Yeah. But they aren't, they aren't directly notified. So, I mean, just being all honesty, I don't know if they know this is going on. I mean, we're taking his, and I have no problem doing that, but we're yeah. taking his word for it that he's talked to the neighbors. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if he... You look like an honest guy. So. <laughs> I mean, historically, we don't ask neighbors for approval of outbuildings, but also when people normally need a waiver t to build an outbuilding. So it's a little bit different. we don't have this type of outbuilding. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. No, I would agree. Um, okay. Any other questions or comments? No. No? Is anyone at a point where I'm going to need a roll call vote on this? <laughs> All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Awesome. Good luck. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. <laughs> Resolution PC 066 2022 approval of a monument sign for the Muskego Moose Lodge located at South 86 West 2169 Janesville Road, tax key number 2231.995. Second. Second. Uh, so this request in front of us is ultimately for a waiver to the percentage of signage allowance for electronic message center or like the electronic reader board portion of the screen uh, for the Moose Lodge. Um, the ordinance in our code normally states that the message center portion of a sign uh, maxes out at 25% of the total sign area. Um, but it does have a exception in it, basically allows a waiver subject to planning commission review and approval um, for any reader boards like this for theaters, churches, schools, government, and other nonprofit related service clubs or organizations, which obviously they fit into those groups. Um, so they're asking for um, an overall sign size of about 47 square feet, which 18 square feet or about 38% of it would be message board. Um, so the plan commission, um, has not actually reviewed a petition like this. This is a code section that I don't want to say is more recently discovered, but no one's really ever 
taken advantage of or utilized. Um, we've worked with one other person on one, but this is the first one that's come to the plan commission here so far. So it's kind of new territory. Um, so we just wanted to discuss with the plan commission and see if they're okay with it. Um, it did, the sign is located um, in a vision corner of the property, which normally would be a concern. Aaron, you want to go maybe back up? One more, yeah, let that page right there. Um, it is located in the vision corner, which is an area we kind of normally try to keep things under a height of two and a half feet from the intersection. But given that this vision corner is so far from the physical intersection, staff didn't have a concern with that. And it actually has already been granted a waiver from the Public Works and Safety Committee saying that's not an issue. So that's not something we need to worry about here. That's already been approved. Okay. So it's really just a question of the message board size. Everything else will follow the normal code requirements. So is this... Is that the message board area? Yeah. That's yeah. Right. It's a digital then. It, Correct. It's a, okay. It's a poor yeah. drawing. It, it kind of lost me in the picture. Actually, I was looking at yeah. the question also. Yeah. They did a poor drawing of it, but I get it now. Any comments or questions? Yeah. And Aaron, um, Aaron has been the one doing the review on this. Was the bottom, was there some talk with the bottom having some different material or what's... What is just the showing blue, blue. I'm not sure what's... Yeah, we talked to the sign company about this and... The base is supposed to match the building, so this shows a blue base, a two-foot base, but it would actually have some sort of um, like a faux stone on it to match the building, so it looks the same as the building. Okay. So subject to our existing code besides that, so we don't have to worry about that. Yeah, anymore. yeah. Okay. Questions, comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes. There is no miscellaneous business. A motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned at 635. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.